вот уже треть жителей США в возрасте от 18 до 24 лет верят, что Земля плоская. А почти 15% американцев в возрасте за 30 с ними согласны. Никому не нравится чувство, что мы находимся на маленьком шарике, который несется сквозь Вселенную. Да, закроют программы с астрофизическим и космическим уклоном. Оставшиеся естественные науки, как биология, геология, океанология, археология и другие, должны быть полностью обновлены. still round. I'm here to tell you it's not. It's flat. <laughs> he has a he's an interesting guy, man, and uh, you know he believes it so. Kyrie, the Earth is flat, right? Yeah. 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 So whatever. Yeah, Earth is flat. That's news. That's news. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Casting straight to you from a large spaceship, spreading flat earth and cheer this holiday season. What do I want for Christmas? A new world truth. What do you want? Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Check it out at MarkSargent.com and ClosedWorld.com or just Google Flat Earth Clues. If you can't find it, you don't have enough holiday cheer in your bloodstream right now. Find some in Flat Earth today. For those of you listening to this on YouTube and want to hear the show live as it happens, please go to Truth Frequency Radio for the latest schedule. Currently, this show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. Quote of the day from the peanut gallery. In a controversy, the instant we feel anger, we have already ceased striving for the truth and have begun striving for ourselves. That was from Buddha. Phone number to call in tonight is 720-897-6111. That phone number again is 720-897-6111. Operators are standing by, and by that I mean me. So if you call in, don't be mean, because remember, no matter where you go, there you are. Subject matter experts are, you know what, we got to do a Jeffrey Grupp, Grupp challenge. Anyone wants to debate Flat Earth, they're not going to be able to get me right away, uh, probably because I promised the next debate to a friend of mine, Jeffrey Grupp, probably the biggest brain and physically the biggest hat size in Flat Earth right now. It's over a size, I have a size 8 hat, and he's about, I think, eight and a half. That's pretty big. But anyone wants to debate Flat Earth, please let me know. Contact me at that phone number or um, email me at msargent23 at comcast.net, and I will set you up. Subject matter experts are always encouraged to call in or contact me, and so far we've got a United States Navy missile instructor, an Air Force navigator, a Marine Corps sniper instructor, a Navy submarine chief, an Army artillery radar operator, an Australian intelligence officer, an American flight instructor, an industrial engineer specializing in valves and seals, a career surveyor of over 32 years, an international shipping expert, a corporate travel agent, air traffic controller, United States Army master gunner, Aviation and ground training combat expert, USDA surveyor of 27 years, 32nd degree Mason, etheric science researcher, commercial airline captain, merchant marine. You can listen to all these guys or their statements that I read for them on my testimony shows, and that playlist is on YouTube. 
while we are waiting for our calls to come in, let's get right to the emails. Remember, you can email me, and if I think it's interesting, I will read it on the air. If I don't read it here on Strange World, I will read it on my Flat Earth Q&A email shows, which I usually do the following day. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. We'll see. But we'll see how many we can get through. This one is from Bob. Bob says, I got thinking, why do we even, oh yeah, it's called uh, fisheye lens. I got thinking, why do we even use them and why are they the standard? Is it possible that the fisheye lens was invented solely to distort the people's perception? Was it that deep and diabolical? Below is the wiki entry. And you can look it up on fish, uh, wiki fisheye lens. And here's the quote from it. And sure enough, they came into wide use right around the transition time. This is from Wiki. Mass-produced fisheye lenses for photography first appeared in the early 1960s and are generally used for their unique distorted appearance. For the popular 35mm film format, typical focal lengths of fisheye lenses are between 8mm and 10mm for circular images and 15 to 16, so on and so on. Uh, early 60s. Uh, phone, ah, shoot. Uh, Whoever was calling, call right back. I was trying to pick you up and then you disappeared. Uh, for digital cameras using small electronic images such as one quarter inch, one third inch format, CCD or CMOS sensors, the focal length of miniature fisheye lenses can be as short as one to two millimeters. Yes, early 60s, all part of the script. So thank you, thank you, Bob. Very interesting stuff. And whoever was calling in from, I think it was 704 area code, please do call in. I did not hang up on you or anything like that. So uh, you just dropped off. This is from Ken. Ken writes, NASA versus the American dream. This might be a bit of a tangent, but if you think back, way back when the typical family had a single breadwinner and a spouse at home taking care of the home, children, supper, etc. I'm sorry, etc. Oof, almost got caught there. Pay off a home in 10 years and maybe a second home or a cottage. It seems like a utopia. Then came the space program. NASA and the $60 million tax to the people to produce grainy images or CGI movies. Now, the typical family requires two people working to stay above the poverty level, notwithstanding the illusionary car, SUV, boat, and cottage owned by the bank. My point is that the globe model is necessary to increase the transfer of wealth from the people to the elites. This might be the tip of another iceberg that could rock the world of the ultra elites. Interesting. Not bad at all. And you would be right. I mean, the, look at inflation and what a dollar used to buy you even in the 1970s versus right now. I mean, financing cars didn't even really exist in the 1970s. You paid cash. I remember my father buying a, uh, was it a 73 Dodge Duster V6, mind you. Uh, this call's coming in. It's unknown. Woo. Let's pick it up anyway. You are on live with Strange World. Who are you? Where are you from? And what are we talking about? Hello. Hello. Hi. Do you know you're calling into a radio show? Done. What? You know time to done. <laughs> Could I have to enunciate a little better than that? Ah, he hung up. That's all right. If he calls again, well, I might give him one more shot since I have no idea what he was talking about. Jonathan writes... Jonathan Summers. Hi, Mark. This is my first email to you, so I'll keep it brief. I'm pretty sure your Flat Earth Clues series is one of the main productions that first opened my mind to Flat Earth. I'll spare you my bio for the moment. I just wanted to recommend this video I made and see what you think about it. I've got two copies of it because I messed one up with editing. Not very savvy with video editing so far, but I'm learning nevertheless. The two videos have a couple thousand views over the past month and seems to have been received very well by the Flat Earth community. If you have time, check it out. I would appreciate your feedback. Have a great day and many blessings, partner. Partner? Talk to you later, Jonathan Summers. And if I click on it real quick, the video was called um, Moon Rotation Orbit Impossibility by Jonathan Summers. I made that November 11th. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I dug it. I'm pretty sure I gave it a thumbs up, didn't I? Did I comment on that one? I commented on one of them, maybe, but, but I, I liked it. So very cool. Thank you, thank you for sending it to me. Yeah, if anyone makes a video and wants my opinion on it, and if I haven't watched or comments, because I, I can't watch every single Flat Earth video that's out there. It's impossible. There's so many Flat Earth videos to go through. But I, I do try to go to the ones that are recommended to me. So next, this one's from Shannon. 
Shannon Raymer. Uh, Mark, my wife asked me to come upstairs and explain this earth to my three stepkids. That's the title of the, the email. 306 area code calling in. You are on live with Strange World. Who are you? Where are you from? And really, what are we talking about? Hey, Mark. How's it going? Hey, it's going pretty good. Where are you? Where are you? Saskatchewan, Canada. <laughs> right on. Right on. What's, uh, what's new? Hey, um, uh, no, much colder. Yeah. Well, I've been listening to you for about four months, and uh, me and my wife were driving around one afternoon. Uh-huh. And I stopped the surveyor on the side of the road, and I was telling him about the flat earth, right? Yeah. And he tried to tell me that he, he they take in, a, in factor in the curvature and stuff, and I told him, no, he doesn't. And he agreed with me. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we got, we got, I drove away, and I gave him your, your website and told him to look you up and whatnot. Yeah. And I went down to the end of the road, and I turned around, and he was driving towards me, and I gave him the flat earth wave, right? Yeah. Take my right arm out in the wind, like in front of the windshield. And my wife's like, she's going to think you're giving him the Nazi symbol or the Nazi sign, right? Yeah. And we look at each other, and I'm thinking that Hitler knew about the flat earth, and that was the whole earth thing. <laughs> Wait a minute, is that last part again? <laughs> you, know, you know the Nazi way, right? Yeah. I waved to this guy like that. I was just giving him, like, yeah, it's flat, buddy, when I met him on the road again. Yeah. And my wife's like, he's going to think you were away with giving him the, the Hitler wave or whatever, right? Oh, oh I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah, you're like, right, because the Hitler, the, the Sig Heil salute is kind of flattish. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just don't, yeah, just don't. What yeah, do you think about that? Yeah, don't hold, yeah, anyone that's doing that, don't hold your hand up at an, at an angle, your arm up at an angle. Make sure it's flat. Yeah, no, I think, I, think yeah, I, was kind of, I was kind of up over the dash, eh? and and uh, yeah, he, uh, my wife's thinking like maybe, maybe they knew about it. <laughs> maybe, maybe. I mean, no, I mean the Germans. You got to remember, the Germans were the only group that were actually exploring Antarctica during World War II. They had the whole place to exactly. themselves. And again, I don't think it was a coincidence that Operation High Jump, which was in 1946. Was you know to to go to root out with the Nazis that were still down there? Exactly. Yeah. Right on, man. Well, thank you. That's that's awesome, and I'm I'm glad you talked to a surveyor. You remember ninety? In fact, I said this on an earlier interview. Ninety five percent of all surveyors are planar surveyors, which treat the world like it's perfectly flat. I mean, it's in it's in Wiki. You can look it up. That's the clinical definition of the, what they do as a job. I know. I, and at first, this guy, he's trying to tell me they did, and I, I like to argue, so I was arguing with him, and he admitted that he doesn't. Yeah. I mean, everybody, yeah, everybody's heard of it, but nobody does it in their 9-to-5 job. Yeah, absolutely right. Good for you. Good good that you stuck to your guns. Right on. So I drive truck, and I listen to all your stuff. Oh, all day thanks. long, I listen to this stuff. So it's freaking awesome. Thanks, man. That's fantastic. Hey, before I let you go, do you want to, you want to give any shout-outs? No, I'm good. Just, uh, just uh, Saskatchewan and the guy with the Saskatchewan license plate. I want to get one, too. Okay. <laughs> right on. Well, you know, there's a bunch of different variations. So, cool, man. Good for you. Okay, just do that salute once when nobody's looking and see if that doesn't remind you of maybe of some guys, you know, the flat earth thing there. Yeah, yeah, good point. All right, man. Hey, okay, you, have, Mark. you have a good night. Yeah, you too. Bye. Bye-bye. Anyway, uh, let's finish this email by the guy who's trying to explain the flat earth to his three stepkids. He writes, it was crazy. I've been married to my second wife for about seven and a half years and have always been into conspiracy stuff, 9-11, Sandy Hook, etc. And I've introduced my wife to another phone call. This one's from 701 area code. You're on live with Strange World. Who are you? Where are you from? What are we rapping about? (laughs) Good evening, sir. Um, My given name is Kevin Shores, yeah, but I prefer to be called Naysay in homage to my uh, Native American ancestry. Oh, cool! And with with that being said, uh, which I always feel weird saying it, I am a practicing Anishinaabe. <laughs> and <laughs> okay, and uh, uh, Mr. Sergeant, if I may be so bold and call you or address you as Park, sure, that's fine. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, so. I would love to debate the flat earth. And, uh, for, for or against? Uh, 
Well, I would just like to debate it because I am pretty much on the fence. Oh, sure. Because okay. because what I what I would have to do is to you know if we if we look at it with critical thinking and scientific deduction, yeah, we would have to set the parameters of the actual belief of facts. Yeah. Because as I you know, and I enjoy your show. Thanks. And when I'm not doing open mic comedy on Tuesday nights, I'm usually listening to your show <laughs> cool. with no pun there. But, uh, <laughs> nice. But, uh, but uh, I mean, when, when at the opening of your show, when you discuss about the flat earth and you add in the confines of a social construct, mm-hmm. like the Truman show, yeah. that part I would agree with okay. because I do believe that the powers that shouldn't be have, designed since the beginning of time that the powers that shouldn't be have been in control, that they have established a false reality for us, the lack of a better term, sheeple, to exist within. However, the flat earth, this is where I have my my challenges Mm -hmm. in the flat earth. And, And for the initial point of discussion, I also have three years, well, I, I, I lied, I'm sorry, two years, eight months, and 23 days <laughs> in active duty of the Navy. Oh, okay. All right. And then I had my reserve time, you know, active duty reserve, you know, but being in the Navy, I was a radio man, which is onboard ship communication. Yep. And in that, in that, uh, um, position we had security classification Mm -hmm. and because of that we were allowed in certain areas of the ship where most people on the crew weren't allowed in Uh, example combat control and damage control and also some of us got to go into outboard or into the missile uh, launching area and Mm -hmm. Because of these interests, you know, I, I would get into the missile guidance and ask them how this actually works. And also with combat control, you know, which is radar and, and watching airplanes and ships coming back and forth and, you know, just keeping an eye on what's surrounding us. But then also, as a radio man on board ship communications, part of our division are the single men. And the single men are the gentlemen that sit on the outside of the ship and they watch with binoculars. You know, they were like the people that used to be in the crow's nest. Yeah. And and the single men were the ones that would use flags and semaphores and, you know, different methods of old school, like we're talking ancient Phoenician, you know, trades that have been traded on from year down to year in the whole sailing the seas. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, my argument is why do you believe that they had a crow's nest on a ship for sighting other ships in the distance? Oh, that's fairly easy. I mean, you still having a higher vantage point is still the optimum way to go. If you're going for optics, it doesn't matter if you're standing on the top of a ship or the top of a cliff that's overlooking the beach, you can still see farther. Your perspective is whatever you call it. It's clearer and you get a better angle. So, I mean, the, the vanishing point is affected somewhat, but higher altitudes can always see at a better angle than a straight horizontal perspective. Less distortion, okay. as it were. Oh, sorry. I'm so, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. Oh, no, I, that's, that's what I'd go for right away. I mean, I, again, I wouldn't, treat, I wouldn't treat a crow's nest on a ship any different than I would uh, the, you know, a, no different than a lifeguard uh, tower on a beach. You can just get a better field of view. Well, I, I, I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's tied directly to the curvature. If that's what you're. If that's what you're gunning for there. Okay. Well, as you know, spending hours and days and months at sea, mm-hmm. 
and having, you know, one of my best friends was a single man. Yeah. So I, I, by chance, got to be able to use super high-powered binoculars. Yeah. And, and I've been in a situation where they've said where we're steaming into port, where we would be steaming into port, and then we'd be like, okay, this is where we are on the map. Yeah. And so then it would be like, okay, so then within the next three minutes, we should start seeing the uh, either the light or the uh, land. Yeah. You know, and yeah. so we would sit there with the with binoculars, you know, standing in the horizon. Yeah. And looking for it, and and in both heavy seas and flat seas, I have witnessed the same phenomenon where you where it would come in and out. And as we got closer, it became more prominent to witness. Oh, no, I, I, know, I know what you're talking about. If you get it, in fact, let me see if I can find it on here real quick. The, the only way, you're talking about a distortion. There's a wave of optical distortion you will run into. Depend, it really doesn't matter that much whether it's rough seas or, or flat seas. Uh, it's something to do with the water and refraction and you know distance, whatever you want to call it. But the guy that did the best video on it, I don't know if you've seen it yet, would be I'm normally I'd refer, I'd refer you to like Jeffrey Grubb or, or DITRH or something like that. But Jaronism did a fantastic video on it where he was showing video of a boat at distance and there was this band of distortion that would absolutely mask everything and it was completely variable where he was showing birds that could dive into it and he was going look these birds aren't diving into the water they're just vanishing out of sight and they were the birds were between the the beach and this boat uh it was right, with his perspective from land or from the boat uh his perspective was from land i, I know what okay. you're talking i know you're probably saying you know from the boat it might be a little different but I know it's, it's only difference because the temperature of the earth comparatively to the temperature of the water will cause the distortion of where the two differences meet. Sure. Sure. I got you. I got you. It's a, it's an interesting point. I don't think though that the, what you're describing is tied directly to the curvature of the earth concept as much as it is just general distortion over water. Uh, that's that's what I go with. I, I've never seen any effect. Hang on, there's somebody who just sent me. Peanut Gallery just chimed in on this. And the Peanut Gallery says, because uh, atmospheric optics under Wikipedia. Atmospheric optics. Oh, Wikipedia, we're going to use this for well, a reference. Well, that's, that's what he said. <laughs> anyway, I, the, I, not, not to belabor the point, and, and believe me, I'd love to get into a, a, a hardcore debate with you over this. We, we, we could probably set something up, but I'd still go with the, the people that I've talked to in the past, which is, you know, the, the Navy missile instructor that said, look, we're punching a two inch beam radar ship to ship. He goes at 60 miles. Well, 50 nautical miles, six, 60 statute miles. And he goes and he goes, that yeah, but is a radar is totally different than a, than a direct sight of line or line of sight. Well, yeah, but it shouldn't it even be better. In that case, I mean, we're not talking general. No. We're not talking spread radar or, or bouncing radar off off one of the, the the ionosphere or something. We're talking point to point. At right, maybe... but point to point radar is using electromagnetic force. Yeah. In order to find to find objects, it's not using the same because when you use vision, you're using different frequencies. Okay. All right. Because been... when you see. Then, then I'll I'll go apples to apples with you on this, and I okay. will point you to a t twelve hour time lapse video of the Chicago Chicago skyline from Lake Michigan, which is show, and this goes through weather, multiple light changes, including darkness. It, you know, covers the whole day, and the image of the skyline. It's beach, you know, beach to beach. And the skyline doesn't doesn't waver, doesn't go inverted, and when it gets dark, it's it, the resolution is good enough you can actually see the cleaning crews starting at the top floors and working their way down. You know, right. it, it's and not... then what is the elevation of both points in your line of sight? Uh, it looked like it was about I don't know ten feet, maybe uh, ten feet uh, above sea level on one side, and looking 
directly over the water. So you're talking, you know, less ten feet or less on the other side, and he sees right, and he's seeing the whole thing. But then we then we start getting into where my second point I wanted to go is when we're talking about gyroscopes, and when we're using gyroscopes in order to use for GPS positioning. Yeah. Because the GPS the GPS positioning is just like absolutely so complex because when, when you first initiate a gyro, yeah, you know if you if you okay, let's see how I can. Explain That's okay. Do, do it. Do it I, quick. Whatever it is, go because you get about two minutes to the break. Okay. Well, think of a clock. Yeah. If you think of the the clock and you think of the center of the clock. Yeah. Okay. And then think of it, you know, suspension of discussion that the clock is the earth. Yeah. And the center of the clock is the middle of the earth. Yeah. Okay. So then from that point to the middle of the earth, all the way up to the edge of the clock yeah. would determine your altitude from the center of the clock, which the GPS determines. And then once that is established at what level you are, say, and you're at the edge of the clock, yeah. Then it creates a flat plane specifically at the point of where you are at the degree on the edge of that. It'll create a, a flat plane. And as you go around, like the hands go around the yes. circle, that flat plane will be established at every single point you're at. Oh, I, I got from you. The moment, from the moment your first established point is, then that is zeroed out as zero. Got it. And then as you go around the curvature, then it becomes so many degrees to the right or so many degrees to the left. And then you add in because you need three points for a gyro. Sure. You know, you you need your initiating point, your destination point, and then you need your zero point of where it all more or less like your control yeah. is your zero point. Got it. And then once that established your gyroscope will constantly recalibrate itself upon your initial zero point. Got it. However, in the greater system of the GPS system, the government has placed certain things in the ground throughout the country that make hey, multiple... Hey, hate to do this to you, man, but we're, we're going to break. So, so, sorry. But thank you, thank you very much for calling. Welcome back to Strange World. I'm Mark Sargent, and this is part two of four. And we do have a caller on the line, but before we get to that, I've got to finish this email because I've started it like three times already. It won't take long, though. Uh, let's see. I introduced my wife, blah, blah, blah. But my wife actually blew me away the other night. I finally mentioned to her something about the flat earth in a conversation we were having, just brought it up by asking her if she'd heard anything about it. I couldn't believe it, but she actually asked me questions about it. There were a couple, that was a couple of months ago, but last night she actually had me come upstairs and talk to my three stepkids about it and explain everything I knew. Of course, I referenced Flat Earth Clues and explained to them everything I knew. Anyway, they were all really intrigued, actually. I hope you have a great day and thank you for blowing my mind. Keep it flat, Shannon Raymer. So thank you, thank you very much, Shannon. And the call that came in, are you still there, caller? Me? Yeah. Hey, Mark, what's up, man? <laughs> Not much. Where, where are you calling from? I am uh, in Baltimore, Maryland. My name's AJ. Hey, AJ, what, what, what are we talking about? 
<clears throat> nothing. I just got off work and I noticed it was 1030. I was like, fuck, let me see if I can get a hold of Mark. And <laughs> first time I called, I got a hold of you. <laughs> nice. Well, no, it was good timing because yeah. I, I happened to be uh, grabbing a quick snack. And as I came back, I saw the phone call, and it's like, if you call in during the commercial, that's great. If, you know, I'll just say, hey, you yeah. have to listen to some music in the yeah, meantime. Yeah, I know the deal. So. Yeah, I've been listening to your show for about every week for about almost a year now. I, uh, cool. I've stumbled upon your video on YouTube just randomly, and I've always been pretty open to conspiracies. Ever since uh, I saw the documentary Loose Change, like, my whole world's been flipped up, upside down, and this is just my yeah. thing that I've been looking for, you know? Like, all this stuff just adds up. And leans back to the flat Earth. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm one of your soldiers because loose change would have been a great is a great way. If you want to watch your very first, even though these got those guys have pretty much recanted since then or been browbeaten into submission, mm-hmm. they it's a great, especially the the first two versions of it. I think they've got like five versions now. I, I saw the original one, and I remember there was like a volume two. And I was like, I don't need to see it. I've already. I don't have to even go down that whole memoir. I already know. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I, I, there's a bunch of things I wanted to talk to you about. I'm going a blank, but um, what, that's okay. What do you, how, Flat Earth stuff feel, I'm gathering. No, this is actually. Uh, how do you feel about the Mandela effect? Are you do you checking any of this stuff out, or are you? That's weird because I always thought it was the Mandela effect. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I mess. I'm sorry. I do. I, I or and or I say or the Mandela effect. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think it's very possible, but it's it's tough. I, I, I do believe it. I do. But I've watched enough alternate reality movies and science fiction things to know, especially like, you know, if you look at like Groundhog Day and all the variations mm-hmm. of Groundhog Day, that it's so tough to prove because it's based on memory. You know, right. un- unless we have the ability, until we have the ability to tap into somebody's mind and put whatever it is straight to straight into a hard drive and so you could actually watch it. It's tough. It's people say, oh, yeah, I remember the Berenstein Bears. That's, again, people's perception. How should I put this? It's tough because ever since that blue blue or black dress came out, remember you, whether you. Yeah, yeah. Ever since that came out, everything's up for grabs because you could have multiple people. I want to watch some fun videos. Anyone's out there doesn't want to I'm talking about. Look at, you know, the blue or black dress, the dress video where you have people in the same room. Literally looking the same monitor, going no, the dress is blue. It's like, what are you talking? Yeah, about? It's like, obviously black or it's white. I can't remember. It was a yeah. white, white, white. Yeah, it was white and gold and black and blue. Me there and my girlfriend go. were both on the opposite sides of that. So I was. Yeah. And I actually, but, uh, wait, did you ever? Uh, was watching it and it changed while she was watching it. No, I missed that. One. Oh, she freaked out. <laughs> She's like, holy crap! It's no, yeah. now it's it changed colors on her while she was watching it. You know, it gives you get an idea. But what I'm getting is, yeah, I believe it. I, I think the, the it would not surprise me, especially if it's a simulated world or yeah, anything. I, I checked the, the Reddit forums and like Reddit effect. But if you look for like the flat earth, it's just so much like everyone's so much hate on it. Like yeah. all I see though, I see no matter what, I see intelligent design. Like either we're in a simulation or this place has been hijacked by the so-called devil. Like it's one or the other. Man. There you I, go. Yeah. So. Yeah. It, it Again, the, the hate only comes from... The, that's how good it is. No other conspiracy. People have got to, they've got to understand why they're angry. You know, yeah. People, people that b- totally believe in aliens and yet they'll turn around and they'll say, Oh yeah, flyers a piece of crap. It, they'll, they'll love mm-hmm. every other conspiracy. Well, even, even the, what, what possibly could be controlled opposition. The fact that Joe Rogan, uh, Coast, oh, that Joe, uh, George Nori and, Alex Jones all completely believe in everything that NASA tells them. Not, they... not always. I, 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 I love Joe Rogan. Well, I used to. I, I met I met that mother, that mother effer at a bar, and we had a couple beers, and we're talking space and moon hoax and all this stuff. Was and this like, was this back when he hated NASA? Yeah. Oh. This was, yeah. He, he opened my eyes to all of that, and then like I, I used to listen to this show every every day it was on, and then he just starts starts to change and i'm like man what is going on here like so i can't even listen to a show anymore no i was like joe like you you were the one who turned my eyes to all this yeah so, find, that's find why. Me another conspiracy guy that became an anti-conspiracy guy i, I don't think they exist and and he was i mean to find me a conspiracy he believes in now i don't know what he talks about on his show all the time yeah, I, I don't even listen to it anymore, man. It, yeah. it broke my heart. I have a picture of that bar on my wall. That's ah, like, really cool. It's like, God damn, man. 
But uh, I, oh, yeah. I, lo- I love listening to him. So, hey, hey, Mark, thanks for doing what you're doing, man. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna try to call back next week. Maybe. Oh I'll no, no worries, what I well, to man. Talk hey, to you about. Uh, th- thanks for calling in, and uh, you know, I'll I'll wait for you. All right, Mark. Thanks, man. Keep doing right. what you're doing. Okay, thank you. All right, brother. Bye. Bye. All right, let's see. I phone calls start rolling in, so let's uh, let's see if I can knock out this email before they call back. Uh, this one's from Stephen Horton. Hi, I've just spent the last two hours watching your film and just want to tell you how much I enjoyed it and found it very fascinating. Do you really think it could be true? My mind is spinning. I'd like to find out more about the nukes they sent into the sky. Crazy it is. Just thought I'd say a quick thank you for say a quick thank you for the work and effort you must have put in. You did a great job. Thank you, Stephen Horton. Uh, moving on. Whoever was calling, please do call back. Didn't mean to cut you guys off. Oh, let's see here. You're on live with Strange World. Who are you? Where are you from? Hey, I'm Ad Blocker from uh, from Earth Discussion. Ad Blocker from Earth Discussion. Cool, I guess. Wait, I, are, do you know you're on the show? Yeah, I know I'm on the show. Oh, okay. What what are we what are we talking about? Yeah, I was wondering. Uh, like if you uh, know whether or not you're a jabroni. N- n- no. Richard, I, can you spell the last name? Can I spell what? So, say, say that last, say that, that term again. Uh, did you know that you're a jabroni? Jab- I don't even know what that is. Uh, it's somebody who believes that the earth is flat. Oh, is that an official term? Yeah. Wow. We've been doing this for a couple of years now. No one's ever told me that. I did not know. Well, now you know, and knowing is half the battle. <laughs> and that's it? That's all you got? Well, you should also know that the Earth is round. Ah, got it. God, I've never, I've never heard that one before, but thank you very much. Next caller. Hi, Mark. Enjoying the observations and analysis of the curve test you're performing. Hot Potatoes 137 got me out to the registration office to pay an outrageous price for the Alberta license plate, it's flat. I T S F L A T. It was available and should arrive in three to four weeks, barring any attempt to ban it. I don't think it's going to be banned. I'll send a photo soon. 2017 should be interesting. Ken from Canada. Yeah, if anyone is curious how many plates I think, I think we're like at 16 plates. I'm, uh, the Canadian provinces are actually getting snapped up faster than the American ones. Although the American versions, we've got flat earth and it's flat with six letters and seven letters and eight letters. And uh, it's really, really cool. So thank you. Thank you for that. Moving on. Sean Hartwell writes, hey, Mark, I did a quick look at the locks of the Panama Canal and it appears from a picture that I saw that the oceans on both sides are the same level. But there are locks on both sides to raise the ships up as they pass through the lakes on the continent content on the content and then back down to sea level so cool because yeah we were talking about that so we're saying shouldn't this be sea level on both sides shouldn't it be absolutely level and yeah it's passing through so much land and lakes that maybe, you know, maybe there is some some locks that raise it and lower it so cool thank you moving on michael writes uh what song is your outro song thanks uh, from Michael S M A G A C Z, and the outro song, the very end of the show, it's a little clip from a '70s tune. The artist is called Donny Iris, I R I S, and the song it's one of my favorite uh, uh, childhood songs, which is called A L E A A H space L E A H. So thank you very much for that. Peanut Gallery is writing me stuff, and I better read this real quick. Uh, let's see. Oh, got it. Got it. Thank you, Peanut Gallery, for that. Uh, let's see here. Flat Earth Clues from Chris. Greetings, sir. After a long respite, I just watched Eric Dubay's compilation of your interviews where he proves you're a shill. It's absolutely brilliant stuff. So again, my hat's off to you. This is the bit stuff the bit stuff I've ever seen. Is anybody catching on to what you're doing? Cheers, Chris. And I wrote him back and, and he doesn't believe that I'm a shill. It's just that uh, Eric won't stop doing that. I don't know. 
he's done that since minute one, and I'm not exactly sure why he keeps doing it. Again, I've never said anything bad against Eric Dubay. I'm never going to say anything bad against him or any other flat earther for that uh, for that matter. He's done the 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 community a lot of good so far. Am, am I a big fan of his anti-Semitic rants? No. Uh, like anything, look, I, I try to go on flat earth and not deviate from flat earth. He wants to lump in other things with it. Uh, sort of like the uh, the congressman when you're doing a bill and you try to tack on other things. I don't believe in that. So, but he, hey, he's got 70,000 subscribers and doesn't seem to be slowing down. So good for him uh, that he's still doing the stuff. Uh, if he wants to keep picking on me and everybody else in the community, better question to be, who are your allies in the flat earth community? Ah, and everyone needs friends because you got to have friends. Dante writes. Comes up. Greetings, Mark. Your name came up in conversation about the Flat Earth, and I heard you are located in Victoria, Canada. I am going to be hosting a small, intimate gathering of people mostly new to the ideas with some exquisite, high-vibing natural foods prepared for our enjoyment. I've heard you have some vids, uh, which I'll be checking out soon. The date is January 16th. If you're interested, let me know. Sincerely, Dante. Uh, hopefully you're listening to this, Dante. Unfortunately, yeah, I'm in, I'm in Victoria right this second, but I am going down to Seattle uh, to spend with family, for, to spend some time with them for the holidays. So I will not be back. Uh, it's close. I don't know. It's, I don't think I'm going to be back in time because the, the ferry situation here is um, the Anacortes to Sydney Ferry shuts down on January 4th. So I'm going to be trying to figure out a different way to get. There's like five different ways to get from Seattle to Victoria, and uh, I'll be taking a different route. It's going to be longer. I just don't think I'll be able to make it. But thank you. Thank you very much for that. Hopefully you're listening, and maybe I'll save this one so I can write you back as well. Uh, Christopher writes, Survival Survival Guide. Good evening, Mark. I heard your show from yesterday. Always great show. Collins and emails. I heard the email from Dan, the guy from Long Island, New York. If possible, I'd like to contact with him. I'm on the North Shore, Long Island, and have thought the exact same thing about distance from Long Island to Connecticut. Please feel free to give him my email address. It would also be great if you could send me the survival guide that we were talking about as well. Thank you in advance for both. Have a fantastic and blessed day and Merry Christmas. And Christopher, if anyone's out in Long Island and wants to contact him, his email address is, might as well just say it right here, Chris, C-H-R-I-S, at Chris, uh, M-A-C-A-R-T-N-E-Y dot com. So Chris at Chris McCarty. Dot com. So hopefully you guys can, can meet up and do some stuff. Flat Earth groups are forming. Moving on. Jeddah writes. Uh, what's Jeddah? Structural changes. Hello, I found your series on Flat Earth last night. My first thought was, of course, this is a joke. However, I was impressed by and captivated at your ability to articulate information. So I kept listening. Your presentation kept me... Uh, up watching it all night. I'm a Christian, but not of any organized religious establishment or denomination. I'm a retired researcher scientist type. The two do not conflict within me. I'm open-minded and love thinking, INTP personality type. Since retiring, I'm free to research things and entertain ideas well beyond that which encumbered my mind during my career, you know, tunnel vision, interpersonal workplace conflict, and being in a very closed-off environment. At first, I was amused at the creativity of all the conspiracy theorists out there, but a strange thing happened, which I won't go into, which led me into re-examining and scrutinizing the world around me. I'm finding an astounding connection to all the conspiracy theories out there, be it from religious, non-religious, strictly science, Christian science, flat earth, hollow earth, UFO mania, all roads as far apart as, and as far apart as different, And though on the surface seemingly unrelated as they all appear, I'm seeing that all roads converge at the same place. I had to break down and read the Bible for the first time last month to see what it says. I was shocked at how everything I read in contrast to that which has been conveyed to me over my whole Christian life has been misquoted and taken out of context to deliver seriously inaccurate information won't go into religious discoveries and revelations. So I am emailing because I am curious on your thoughts on how or why the current weather conditions, continent shifts, pole shift, active volcanoes, crazy cloud, chemtrails, 
play into the flat earth. Creators destroying us again to start over, consistent with biblical scripture. What about Planet X, a.k.a. Nibiru? Christians, Christians calling it Planet 7X, which is documented to have been tracked since the 1950s. Uh, astrologically, expected visual confirmation by all of us rather than observation of its celestial objects is this December with its closest point before heading back out, expected March or April of 2017. It is believed by many to be the cause of Earth changes. Indications biblically are that this is part of an end of an age event. This could also be a diversion or possibly something orchestrated to stress authorities to come out with the truth and or a hard push to get what I would call the handlers to fully engage in the final act of this play called Life on Earth. Again, consistent biblically. What about hollow earth? Aliens, demons living in earth and access to their dwelling place at the South Pole. Given that Admiral Byrd mentioned a land mass as large as the United States beyond Antarctica, it would seem there are two large land masses that have never explored, uh, never been explored or exploited. I am uh, exhausted and may have missed it, but haven't been back to look. Does the flat Earth map show a large land mass that Admiral Byrd spoke of just beyond the South Pole? Uh, pff, he's got so many questions. No, no, there's no, there's there's a few maps to mention. The thousand year old map. From Japan, it has a bunch of land masses outside. Not just one, though. Along with other conspiracy theories, our government, the official semi-benevolent one, is said to be extracting DNA from ancient giants, which is why all bones and related discoveries are quickly hidden in the Smithsonian, probably other places in reality, to build hybrid humans to fight giants in the earth and or aliens. Crazy. If that were the case and the Bible I'm reading is correct, they are actually conjuring demons back to life Per being deceived by aliens who are actually just fallen angels, demons pretending to be different types of aliens, benevolent and malevolent, to gain trust and deceive us in order to bring about the biblical fulfillment of their physical presence here with us. Retired from the DOD, I can firmly testify that DOD is a strongly Christian body of people all the way to the top. I don't believe that the DOD collective could intentionally do anything like that knowing what they are doing, but that seriously misunderstood. Bible says that we all realize we have faced a great deception in the last days and that literally, men's hearts will fail from fear of what's coming upon the earth. Uh, yes, very, very possible. Um, uh, let's see here. So anyway, she, there's a lot to cover here. Uh, I'm just going to refer her to a bunch of different interviews I've done. I cover just about every one of these topics in, in different interviews, and so do a lot of other people. Again, don't just look at my stuff. Just type in Flat Earth into YouTube and see what happens. You're going to find a lot of information out there. Do I think this is part of something bigger? Yes, I do. Do I think that it's part of something biblical? I think that all religions are tied to this in some way. They're all, uh, they have pieces of basically the same puzzle, the, the main five religions being Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. So, yeah, a lot of stuff there. Look at, sorry, you're going to have to go through too much stuff to address. Go through some of the other interviews I've done. And, uh, in fact, I did one today. I haven't even put it up yet. Moving on. Uh, this one's from Jarko. J-A-R-K-K-O, last name A-H-O-K-A-S. Greetings from Finland. Uh, uh, question about Elon Musk. Saw clues about 16 months ago and been, been flat earth ever since. Keep up the good work. I heard you mention Elon Musk's real name on one of your podcasts. What was it? Thanks in advance. Every once in a while, someone will do this to me. I don't know why, but I keep getting people saying, oh, yeah, you talked about this. You know, I, I remember just about everything I've talked about. When it comes to topics, I've never mentioned Elon Musk's real name. So I didn't. In fact, when I when I read this email the first time, I was like, "Wait, why? Why would you change your name to Elon Musk? What the heck was it before?" So uh, let's see what the Peanut Gallery's got going on here, real quick. And this call from that guy. Um, and this call from there. Sorry, I've been missing the guys people's calls. Charlotte writes, Flat Earth license plate. And this one is from, oh yeah, this is the one from New York. So Charlotte Reed, and she's out in New York as well, um, her email address for, for the other New York person that's got the plate is handycandymittens at yahoo.com. How's that for fun? Um, it's a picture of a New York license plate, and it's using seven letters instead of eight. You get eight letters out in New York. Here's a pic of our new license plate for our 1973 Dodge Tioga Camper. 
We use it to attend art and craft shows all summer long. I am an upcycled clothing artist. We love your show and all the great info you share. Yours was one of the first Flat Earth videos I've ever seen. After that, I was hooked. Thanks again, Mark. Now we can't wait to get out and get people talking. Peace and love. The Mitten Lady, Charlotte Bisa. Bisa? Bessa? Either way. And uh, she's on Etsy.com, Handy Candy Mittens Shop. Really, really cool. And again, love, you know, she, her license plate will be featured in uh, the slideshow, I think, today for this show. And uh, the dedicated Flat Earth license plate shows that I'm also doing. So it's really, really cool. Uh, let's see here. How to Break the Ice by Nick Caputo. Hey, Mark, I've been watching a lot of videos on Flat Earth lately, and I want to introduce it to my father. I'm just not sure how. I was wondering if you could suggest a good short and to-the-point video with good information that he can watch. He is not great with searching the Internet, and I travel for work, so I'm not there to help. Thank you in advance. Nick Caputo, 26 years old, from Youngstown, Ohio. Yeah, you want to hit hit people with stuff, uh, newbies, people that have not really seen this stuff. One, before you do that, make sure they're at least open to conspiracies in some way. You you can't go from nothing to flat earth. That's really, really tough. I mean, just throw out something out there, anything. JFK, Pearl Harbor, Sandy Hook, Boston bombing, just about any, any American war, Roswell. I, take your pick. Bigfoot. I don't care. You got to give them, you got to figure out if they're into conspiracies at all. If you can, then introduce them to the, the one I would use, and it's on a playlist. I put create a playlist on my YouTube channel, Mark K. Sargent, which is called the Flat Earth Shortlist for Newbies. And it's got a, about 20 plus videos, and I try to keep it uh, somewhat updated. And start from the top and work your, work your way down if you can. Some of the videos are as short as five minutes. Some of them are as long as two hours. So check that out if you get a chance. That's what I recommend to anybody that's brand new. But man, before you even do that, at least throw out, you know, figure out if they're conspiracies. If they don't believe in anything, whew, flat earth is a tall order at that point. A couple more minutes to the break. Phone number when you guys get back from the break is 720 720- Eight nine seven six one one one. That number again is seven two zero eight nine seven six one one one. Dougie Z writes, Kansas car tags purchased. Hey Mark, left you a voicemail a couple hours ago. Wanted to email confirming that today I went to the country county treasurer's office and paid for its flat personalized tags here in Kansas, which contrary to popular belief is quite hilly in the eastern one-third of the state. Just so you know, I've been a truther for several years and came across some videos on YouTube last winter that question flight paths in the southern hemisphere and claim the earth is flat. I'm pretty open-minded, but that really kind of made me shake my head in disbelief. Within a couple of days, I looked into it a little further, and your flat earth clues was in my suggested YouTube videos. I was hooked immediately, and I've watched hundreds of videos, including most of yours, over the past 10 months or so. You are so right when you call it the mother of all conspiracies, even though I prefer the term deception. We've all been brainwashed for over 100 years, and apparently fooling us came easy to those in charge. I listen quite a bit via YouTube to Strange World, Flat Earth, and other hot potatoes, and the interviews, all easy on the ears and not difficult to follow. The states told me four to six weeks before I received my plates, uh, also known as tags here in Kansas, but I'm thinking a little sooner. When I get them, I'll email you a sharp photograph for your slideshow. All the best, Doug Gunn, a.k.a. Dougie Z. D- I, Doug Gunn is a cool name. I don't know why you're going with Dougie Z. I, seriously, D-O-U-G, last name G- G-U-N-N. That's awesome. Thanks, Doug. Uh, we're going to go to break here in just a bit. And we're going to come back with some Flat Earth news. Uh, let's see. If we get, can we get one more? I doubt it. No, we're not going to get this one in before the break. I could always start it, I suppose. This email I'm going to read when we come back, yeah, it's a little long, is from Lunar Tech Steve. It's called What's Flat Looks Round. Uh, can we start it? Sure. Hey, Mark, thanks for reading out my email about the theoretical Earth's spin speed at different latitudes. I'm surprised you got it in so quickly, though it did make me realize it was a bit on the long side. So apologize for that. I'll try to keep this one shorter. And we're going to break. See you guys in a bit.
You are now tuned into the truth frequency. We are TFR. TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World Part 3 of 4. And uh, we had a normally I'd start off with Flat Earth News, but of course we had a phone call come in during the break. Uh, it's probably some guy from the East Coast. Who is it? <laughs> I don't know. Am I is this live? This is a show. I was just <laughs> yeah, we actually do a show. You're actually you're actually really? on the show. No way. Yeah, it's I'm, true. I, uh oh, I'm scared now. Can you talk? Can I... <laughs> so, um, what's happening out in New York? And and you caught that that one I just read about the person that got the um, the New York plate, the seven letter one. Yeah, I saw the picture of it, and I was like, "Son of a bitch, that's the one I was trying to get." So ah, it's okay. Back. Yours? No, honestly, you should have gone gotten for you gone gone for yours because yours was eight letters. Yeah. And and yeah, there's no, only I'm two. Good. I think there's only two states that can do eight letters. One is California, one's New York. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I haven't seen any from California yet, right? I've seen two, but they're not. Seven. It's flat. One of them was a, a was a takeoff on on Patricia's flat Earth, F L T E R T H, and the other one was it B flat, I T B flat. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. But you know what? You want to know what's more interesting? Do you remember if you've listened to my stuff? Remember when I, I mentioned on a show recently that uh, that because uh, my girlfriend was looking up domains and how much they cost for flat Earth, and right. like you can you can if you want to do a domain for you know your street or whatever it was, you could get one from GoDaddy for what ten dollars, if that, <clears throat> and the one from uh, from Earth is flat. Was selling for twenty six, twenty seven thousand American. Really, I know. And here's the here's the kicker. That was three weeks ago. It sold. Really, it, I don't know who bought it, but somebody bought it recently. So how weird is that? So I'm trying. It's, huh. like, it's like who's got the coin to throw down? You know, twenty five plus grand for a domain name. If uh, yeah, if, absolutely corporate person yeah that's corporate i mean that's those are that's corporate pricing you know that's that's uh, uh, that's amazing so yeah. i don't know if somebody's doing that as an investment that they're thinking down the road that someone will you know if they can domain squat someone will you know spend more money on it i don't know but it's not available now that's insane i know yeah. i wonder what, what someone i mean we all know there's something bigger there's yeah something's up yeah. So who knows? Maybe, maybe it's um, maybe it's one of the high. Maybe because I was partly thinking after that NASA climate change video I released uh, yesterday about how it's how it was done from a flat Earth map that 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 maybe NASA is trying to um, you know, take credit for this whole thing before it's over. Right. I definitely got to try to at least put a spin on it. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Anyway, anything uh, anything going on, on your side? Not much. I got my Reggie, but I didn't get the plates yet. Just, nah, that's all right. You'll you'll get them. Uh, it's a, it's amazing how many there are already. We've got. I'm looking through the license plate folder right now that I've got. I had to, again. I have the fact that I have to make a license plate folder. Um, yes. There's two in California, two in New York, two in Texas. So far, uh, one in Washington, Virginia, Utah, Nevada, okay. Iowa, Delaware, Arizona, Germany, and then uh, one on Ontario, Canada, uh, Saskatchewan, Canada, and I keep thinking there's a third Canada that's out there that I haven't figured out. Oh, Illinois, I, it's amazing, you know. It's kill. It's kill. Oh wait, man. I'm sorry. Okay, sorry. The California one. You're gonna love this, and I, I'll put a picture up of it if I get a chance. It's really, really interesting, though. So, it's write this down. Anyone is out there, see if you can figure it out before I tell you tell it to you. So the the seven letter California plate is F I L T A S T T A S T. So F I L T A S T. 
I'll give you guys, you know, just a few seconds to think about this. I did not get this. Here's some weird thinking here. And this guy was doing a subliminal thing. I was, a, I was impressed by the cleverness. It's like, that's why you don't have to do it. It's flat, right? So F-I-L-T-A-S-T, right? Do you have it written down or are you just looking, just thinking about it? No, I'm just thinking about it. Okay. It's every other letter. So every other letter spells F-L-A-T, and then every other letter inside that is I-T-S. I heard my wife scream. I got it. I got it. <laughs> yeah. I-T-S. So. L-A-T. Yeah, it's flat. Awesome. Yeah, it's flat. As in, it's it's as embedded in the middle of flat. Brilliant. I mean, and nobody, I mean, he's like, going to be pulling up to people and nobody's going to get that. Nobody's going to get, they're going to go, what? No, what does that mean? So, because everyone's going to take it literally. It's going to go fill task. I think that's his lame. What a stupid. That's exactly what I was doing. Uh, dumb name, fill task. Guy's probably... <laughs> <laughs> Slovenian or something. Anyway. Wow, that is Yeah. So again, that shows you the the I can't wait to see. I mean, there's plenty of plates out there left, but you know, again, you got six, seven, eight letters. Be creative. Have have some fun with yeah, it. Yeah, that... so, uh, uh, yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, anything uh anything else going on before I get back into this? Nah, not much. I, I was trying to take a week off of flat earth and be Christmassy, you know, try to get in the festive spirit, you know, still got a, a little guy. He's into it. So. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Me, I've got a, I'm doing a, um, a holiday show with uh, Patricia tomorrow. You're and do the flatness show. Yeah. I'm doing the flatness show. I got a great, awesome. I got a great, oh, great. Elf, oh, I, I, I'm going to rig a red and green elf hat. My girlfriend gave me. And uh, then I'm heading down to Seattle for the uh, for Christmas, and then back up, and uh, so can't take can't take too much time off. No. Yeah, I t- actually, I took the week off. It was the first time ever for me. Christmas took off, and I'm just gonna hang out and do nothing and relax and nice. play with the kids' toys. <laughs> Good for you. Honestly, yeah, it should be fun. All right. Well, hey, <laughs> if I don't talk to you before then, you have a great holiday. Yes, definitely. Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas. New Year. And uh, we'll be on next week for – I'm not going to do anything special for the New Year's show because next week is uh, what, the 27th when we do this again. Uh, are you are going to next week? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to definitely do next week. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. And then you guys are going to have to do – you know, you, uh, I wish you guys would do that. Uh, not the countdown. What the heck was it you did? With the um the awards, the new, yes, yes. Oh and, yeah, yeah. The uh, the the flat the flatty awards. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely going to be done. That's coming. Awesome. Yeah, that I think that's yeah, in, def- I think that's in February though. Nice, nice, yeah. excellent. All, All right, man. Well, hey, have a good one. Time. Say say hi to the wife for me. Definitely. You have a good one. Oh, let me give a quick shout out to my friend Rafi. Okay. <laughs> Another new character. He, we're sucking them in left and right. They're they're just falling like flies. <laughs> nice. He's been, uh, he's been looking into it and looking into it, and then we started talking about other stuff, and then I, you know, we kind of ch- tested each other, like, well, what do you think about this, and what do you think about this, and then we realized, holy crap, you believe it. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, too fun. funny. That's cool. Alrighty, awesome. Happy Merry Christmas. Happy right. New Year. You too, man. Talk to you next week. All right. All right. Bye. See ya. Uh, let's see your phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That phone number again is 720-897-6111. We're going to do flat earth news real quick before I get distracted by emails and or phone calls. And all I'm doing is going into YouTube and I'm typing in flat earth. I'm setting the filter to one week and seeing what catches my eye. First thing, of course, would be a video I just put out, which was NASA flat earth climate change model, December, 2016. That turned out pretty cool. Uh, Jaronism is uh, did one called debunking flat earth the reds rhetoric way shameless plug by the way for my free site which is enclosedworld.com and my uh subscription site which is marksargent.com and of course what a great gift to give people this christmas but the flat earth clues book which is on amazon right now just type in flat earth clues in amazon you will find it
Uh, let's see. Flat Earth Defender, David Vos. David Vos. He's been jumping on this a little bit. This ends the Flat Earth Theory as astro- Astrology Part 5. Ooh, good. Another anti-Flat Earther enters the fray. His name is David V-O-S-E. Vos. Vos. He's got 130,000 subscribers, and he's made a couple videos. Apparently, Flat Earth's getting under his skin because he made one called This Ends the Flat Earth Theory, Astrology Part 5, followed by Best and Final Video to Explain Flat Earth is Wrong. Uh, good luck with that, David. Uh, Flat Earth 101, Globe Busters, Flat Earth Numb and Number, Frequently Asked Questions, uh, Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, Apple Flat Earth Coffee Table Book, Awesome. Uh, let's see here. Quasi Luminous still cranking them out. Nathan Oakley, Flat Earth UK. This is all happening in one week. Antonio Subrat's making more videos. Uh, my perspective is still cranking them out. Uh, Flat Earth and Fake Ball Earth Magic. Awesome. That's by Rory Cooper down in South Africa. Uh, let's see here. Quasi Luminous more deep inside the rabbit hole. Eric Dubay, Flat Earther, Holocaust denier. Again, if you're going to do a Flat Earth video, try not to lump in your other pet peeves, you know, people that you want to go out against. You can't say, Flat Earth, you'll knight the world and everything will be great, and then say, I want to wipe out any particular demographic group. Try to avoid that if you can. Uh, Josh Peck, proof of a Flat Earth conspiracy debunked with EDE theory. Pff, we'll see. More cause I was West Truther. We'll go one more page, see if there's anything interesting in there. And G-E-T, GED Skeptic Media, live Saturday night chat with Lori Gale and Validation Boy. Pfft, interesting combination. And 303 area code calling in. Let's see who these guys are. Who are Howdy. you? Where are you from? And hey, did you know you're live on Strange World? And yeah. 303 area code calling in. Okay, make Hello. sure you turn down, turn down the radio behind you. Got it, got it. Sorry. You will, you will get an echo. It's okay. It's a rookie mistake, and you hate to see it, but it happens. <laughs> Very interesting stuff. Thanks, Mark. Oh, no worries. What's uh, what's going on? You're out in Colorado? Yep. Cool. It's a little bumpy, but it's still flat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been there 20 years myself. It, it was a little bumpy. But, yeah, when you when you get off the foothills and start heading towards Kansas and Nebraska, it's pretty flat. Yeah, but I, I heard about this over a year ago, and I just, well, probably about a year and a half or two years ago, and I just thought, that's nuts. I mean, who would think that? Why would anybody think that the Earth is flat? Yeah. But I rolled in the back of my head for, for about a year, like, well, the Bible never talks about a spinning ball type round Earth. It talks about flat Earth, if anything. Yeah. So that stuck with me, and then finally one night I was, at the time, and I looked at one of yours and Jaronism's and who knows whose videos, and it sucked me in. And the more, then I, so I sucked into it for, looked at it for like a few, few weeks at least. Yeah. And then I'm like, wow. And then the other, about a week ago, I said, okay, I've looked at enough flat earth stuff. Let's go back and look at science again and mm-hmm. see if I'm missing something. And I looked at one of the latest Netflix videos on, on the universe. Yeah about a 45 minute video or or not a video, a a documentary or something. Mm -hmm. And it it, it was just pure nonsense. It was pure, pure baloney. There was no fact. It was just, it was all the the telescope stuff and there was no proof of anything. I know they weren't, they weren't trying to debunk the flat earth or anything. They were just talking about the universe. And I'm like, it's all, it just made me think more of the flat earth is more real. Yeah. It's yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you. And I've watched a lot of the this a lot of it's on PBS, but yeah, there's a lot of dedicated channels to it. And it it's one of those things that's Tesla said that really stuck out to me, and that was science just builds equations on top of equations on top of equations until eventually you're you're not doing anything. And I have everybody's head and it's just pure BS. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and people say, well, does that mean you're smarter than Neil deGrasse Tyson, Stephen Hawking, and, and Einstein? I'm going, no, no, I don't have to be. Because if the foundation – I'm not saying these guys aren't smart. I mean a lot of them have heavy, heavy math oh, skills. Yeah. yeah. But if the <laughs> but, foundation that they built their theories on was flawed, then unfortunately their work becomes worthless. And it's like, it's like look, I'm not saying that these guys are dumb guys. Obviously their SAT scores are very, very high. 
But it, you know, if their if their theory is bad, if their theory was was based on somebody, you know, if you just keep working your way backwards to the beginning, if if their model was based on a heliocentric universe, then what can I tell you? They they spent a lot of time and effort on nothing. So yeah, yeah I totally right. agree with you, man. Are you familiar with uh, Michael Tellinger? Yes, he's he's on board recently, right? Yeah, November sixth on face on his Facebook page. Yeah. This year, that's when he came out for a three a three paragraph rant about it. it was awesome. awesome, good, good for him. So if you don't want to look that up and go November sixth, right okay. two days before the election, so that's just something for everybody to go check. And he he's very he does his homework, he does his due diligence before he comes out with anything. I I, I respect him. Right I've on. Known about him for a few years. Cool. Yeah, I always love to see those guys because again, they do their homework. Look at some um, uh, Marty Leeds who did uh, the flat earth litmus test. He worked on that for a while and then, you know, he made one video and he didn't, didn't make a whole bunch and, and he really, really resonated with a lot of people. But the point was he did, he didn't come, come at it um, half assed. You know, he, he did his time and is like, I'm not going to release this unless I'm sure. And when he made it, it was, it was great. Um, so Oh yeah. By the way, real quick, because I, I, it sounds like you, you know, you, you've got a religious background a little bit. Did you, did you follow up and like go to Rob Skiba's website, testingtheglobe.com? dot uh, com? Yeah, it's been a while though, so oh, I can't okay. recall. Yeah, I mean, de- testing, I mean, te- testingtheglobe dot com. Yeah. I think anybody who's Christian, okay. that's a, that's a, it's a great, it's a great site because he goes into chapter and verse just about every mention. Right. In yeah. in uh, uh, I think he uses the King James, but it's uh, it's a great well, great thing. I'm open minded but skeptical of everything, including the Bible. I was the Bible was forced down me growing up, but I saw so I always gotcha. kind of rebelled. And, but then I always came I, I I came back to it, but not crazy. Yeah. But still, I thought, well, if the Bible, if you, you can't have both. I mean, you can't have um what the Bible says, and you can't have a globe. I mean, I, I don't understand the. Yeah, pastors have to figure this out. And yeah. then, then the other big smoking gun is, I'm sure that I can't figure out why they everybody doesn't get this one is the Neil deGrasse and talks about the the pear shaped earth. Oh yeah, yeah, and he's tried to backpedal from that. He's tried oh, and I said, well, yeah, it's, you know, perspectively, it's still as 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 smooth <laughs> and as spherical as a cue ball. And it's like, then why oh, didn't okay. you? Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He described it as a pear shape, not an oblique. It's 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 got a weight problem. Yeah. I'm like yeah, wait a and, minute. And and when Why you your photographs show a perfectly round sphere, and, and you're telling me this, you can't have both. Yeah, when you look up an oblate spheroid in any dictionary, it is very obvious. It is a squished basketball. It's a basketball with somebody standing on top of it. And he's like, that is you know, oblate spheroid is not a perfect sphere. So unless you're talking, you know, less than a point zero zero one discrepancy, unless that's your definition of a blade spheroid, eh, yeah, he, I think he shot himself in the foot on that because, the, you know, that was in front of a lecture hall for God's sakes. Yeah, that was great. Anyway, was uh, any any point. shout outs before I move on to my other um, stuff? This, this last thing I saw you on uh, the Flat Earth Guide, I think it was the Flat Earth Guide dot com. Yeah, there's some stuff on there about you and and others. Oh, cool. I'll, ch- I'll definitely flatearthguide.com. I'll check it out. I think it's theflatearthguide.com. Okay. Awesome. New. Take care. Thanks, guys. Hey, have a good one. Maybe talk to you again. No. Nope. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. We'll be back to the emails real quick. Uh, let's see here. Let's, let's, let's try. I don't know if anyone else has mentioned it, but I'm pretty gutted. Wow, gutted? You dropped the graveyard track that you used to open up your show with. When that music came on, I always used to think, yes, it's time for the sergeant. Okay, maybe that's an exaggeration, but it certainly built anticipation of what might come on your show through associating it with previous shows. Anyway, I have a musical suggestion. I think you might be interested in checking out this video. It's full of interesting Masonic ritual stuff that is ghost from the pinnacle to the pit. I listen to it. It's not It's not bad. I've got, I'm a little bit older, so I was a fan of that ACDC track. But I've changed the opening track. I've changed some of the music a few times because uh, I don't really care about the copyright uh, things when it comes to this show. So the the old the track I was running before this was uh, Goliath, 
the song was Goliath by uh, the band called Graveyard, and it was a very good conspiracy track. I always liked those opening guitar licks, though, from the ACDC Thunderstruck, and it lasts. It goes on. It was a full minute the ACDC thing before it even gets into lyrics, which fit really, really well. Who knows? I may change it again. It just, you know, it just inspires me every once in a while. So, and that email is from Krusiger Globus. Really? K-R-C-R-U-C-I-G-E-R Globus. G-L. You stand your ground, the orbosphere. With, maybe it means nothing, but I thought it was an error. Maybe, oh, no, I'm sorry. He was, that's not, that's not his name. That's the lyrics. I'm not going to read the lyrics. Maybe it means nothing. Thought it was no worthy. Maybe you're a 32nd degree Mason. Oh, friend could comment. Speaking of music, you recently had an email from someone asking you about Hotel California. I think your listener is confusing you with Crow Triple Seven. There we go. Who has mentioned that song in a few of his shows now? I think he first brought it up about 10 to 15 shows ago. I couldn't really say for sure. Thanks again. It's Lunar Tech Steve. Sorry, Lunar Tech. I don't know why I thought your name was Crusader Globus because that was the, the lyrics. And, yeah, somebody asked me recently, it's like, what is it with you in Hotel California? It's like, dude, I've never brought up Hotel California in an episode. Good song, mind you, 1976 Eagles from the uh, Grammy Award winning album of the same name. Uh, but, um, I don't know. Kathy Dunson, she writes and she says, see my note why I'm sending this. Aaron Rainans, Did We Go? Part 5 YouTube video. Five of six parts in interesting documentary. I'm including a link to an Evernote compilation of information just in case you want to see it. Uh, there's a link. Moon laser beam bounces off the retro reflector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not so much. Responses plus the NVIDIA. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you, thank you, Kathy. And uh, if anyone wants to watch a, an episode of something that really ticks me off, go watch Myth, Mythbusters, where they try to prove that we landed on the moon by firing a laser at the moon and saying they got a reflection back. Oh, uh, if that doesn't get your blood boiling, I don't know what will. Luke writes, you, sir, are a shining example of the atheist left liberals that have zero common sense and live in la-la land. I don't know what you're smoking, but I guess I missed it growing up in the 60s. Flat Earth... You have wasted too much of your life already making these YouTube videos. Watching your Flat Earth video would have been a gigantic waste of my time. However, it had been a long time since I laughed that hard. Luke. And that's from Luke Jones. If anyone wants to write Luke Jones, give him a piece of your mind. His email is LukeJones53. I'm guessing that was the year he was born at Yahoo.com. And uh, I don't generally feed the trolls and read troll emails, but if it's if fair, if it's entertaining enough and out outraged enough like this, that's why I read it in that voice. Absolutely, I'll read it. So thank you. I, it's very rare. Ninety nine point nine percent. I'm not kidding you. Yeah, I get a lot of comments in my videos that are not very nice, but people that will go out of their way and email me, or even better, phone call and leave me a, a voicemail is so rare. I get maybe one in a hundred are like this. So thank you, Luke, for, for writing and, and putting putting that out there. And the fact, here's here's the secret he doesn't know. Because he watched the video, it's in his head. So it's not going away. It's the marble in the paint can. He's not shaking that sucker out. Sometime after this this email, he wrote it. He may, in fact, who knows? He may even write me an apology one, one day. And, and if he does, I will read it for you. A couple minutes to the break. Can we get this? What about this? Yeah, we can do this one. Hey, Mark, I applaud your documentary about the flat earth. Not sure about the firmament, though. As a ufologist and alien researcher of many years, there is too much evidence that points to the idea that nothing stops space aliens, like the Recticulans or the Zetans, from entering this atmosphere. Here's something else to consider. Cheers, Paul Richard from the HigherLightChurch.com. And yeah, Paul, I, I'm not saying that the, the, the aliens are, are not here. I'm saying that there's absolutely spaceships flying around there. I'm just saying that they're probably trapped in here with us. Why not, right? Well, before we go to break, can we get one more in? One more in? What about this one? If my email actually doesn't lock up on me. Uh, hi, Mark. Just listen to this week's email show. Thanks for addressing my questions about bird and further evidence about Antarctica's mineral deposits. For me, independent research and evidence to support every aspect of any claim made about anything controversial, flat earth included, is vital. But that said, I, I respect your beliefs. Anyway, that aside, it seems that although the presence of mineral deposits has been independently verified, the logistics means they're uneconomical and actually very dangerous, dangerous to harvest. 
Basic summary here. Any plans to debunk the specific points made by Cool Hard Logic in their recent FE video? I think this episode rises to the challenge to you set in terms of debunking the evidence presented in the Glue series, so it would be interesting to hear your views. The video is here. Best wishes, Andrea. Uh, yeah, look, at this point, anyone that wants to debunk Flat Earth, they're going to have to go into a full-blown debate with the team. They're willing to use their real name and, and debate us. It doesn't have to be on video. It can be audio. You know, I can set up a panel or other people can set up a panel. Look, we're looking for people to fight at this point. And, and because we're not getting enough, we're fighting ourselves. That's a, really the only drawback of the community, in my opinion. Uh, we're, we're just chomping, uh, uh, champing at the bit and, and trying to um, uh, trying to find people to, to convince. So if he wants to come out against us, let him come. You're listening to the True Frequency Radio Network. No hate, no hype, no, 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 no fear. Welcome back to Strange World. This is part four of four. Uh, I'm your host, Mark Sargent. And yes, that was Joe Jackson stepping out from his album, Night and Day. All right, back to the emails. Uh, phone numbers, by the way. The last chance for you guys to call in. And I'll be darned if we don't have another caller from 561 area code. You are on live with Strange World right now. Who are you? Where are you from? Hey, Mark. It's Christine calling from Florida. Hey. I, uh, hey, hey, make sure you turn hey. down your um, your radio in the background. I, I did. Okay. I, uh, for some reason, I was on the other line, and then I waited and waited, and I finally hung up. <laughs> oh. I don't know if that line even worked. <laughs> But anyways, like your show. Um, Thank you. Thanks for thanks for turning my uh, my world into a flat plane and <laughs> made my life all you don't, you made don't my life all crazy. No, but my husband does. Let me tell you. <laughs> oh, no. He 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 loves his globe. He he hangs on to it. Well, but, tell you know, tell like, him if he ever listens. Look, I used to collect antique globes. That was one of my things I collected. <laughs> well, he's a he's a real hard nosed law enforcement guy and uh, just, yeah. but you know it's funny because you know like most people they don't have a clue on how the science religion globe spins and turns and runs into the universe and all this stuff how far away the sun is i know right now more about the globe earth than i ever did just from researching everything that i've learned from listening sure. to you and eric and and a bunch of other people Oh, but yeah. I had taken some I'd taken some photos the other day, and I was showing my husband with some of the sun photos, and he's like, "Yeah, I see the sun every day. You know, I see I watch it rise in the east and go past me, and and then set in the west." And I'm like, "Yeah, it's neat how we watch the sun just travel past us, right, as it's moving through the sky." And he didn't get, get it. He's like, "Yeah, I know. I see the sun. I know the sun moves." <laughs> And I yeah, just kind he's of not laughed to myself. <laughs> I laughed to myself, and I and the whole point, and I'm trying to tell him is you have to use your senses, you know, your common sense mostly, on the fact that we are living on a flat plane, and just the fact that you think that, you know, the sun is moving is the fact that you're using part of your senses is, is your sight. Is, yeah, because the sun is moving. Yeah. So he didn't like that. That I kind of caught him not knowing how the stupid sphere works, but. Uh, you know, I've been reading, uh, and I know you dabble a little bit into Christianity. Uh, not a lot, not enough. Uh, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got through halfway through the Book of Enoch, and yeah. what blows my mind. Yeah. I don't know if you've read it. I have but read I highly it. Highly, you did. So yeah. I mean, there's tons and tons and tons of references to flat earth. Some of it stuff is kind of a little out there. You know, when they talk about the wooden box and the dew comes out of that, and the sure. lightning bolts come out of this box and stuff but i mean that's just a dream right that he's interpreting so you have to kind of read past that but yeah. i mean not only does the bible that everyone reads you know christians read have the lots and lots of flat earth reference but this one does too and i'm sure the other books of the bible that weren't included in the bible 
probably also do. I'm planning on reading all of them since I have read almost the full Bible. Cool. Well, but, dig, uh, dig into um, – um, you want to have some fun if you haven't already. Look into Jasher. The, um, okay. Sp- specifically the end of the third chapter of Jasher. You'll you'll love it. Okay. I'm going to write it down. Okay. My, my son is actually an apologetic, and he can debate the existence of God to anyone and oh, prove cool. it. Um, so now he's become a flat earther, so I can assume that he's going to be doing that too. I find it's easier to speak about flat earth to Christians yeah. because of all of the references in the Bible that when you finally grasp it, it everything in the Bible makes so much more sense. Yeah, It's like, wow, because you can never really grasp it on a globe, like yeah. how it all works, four corners and whatnot, but the, the flat earth makes perfect sense, and the firmament, of course. Um, but yeah. I have a couple things, you know, I, well, first off, I am going to be getting the Florida plate. I've decided my cool. husband is mad at me over that, but I don't know if I'm going to go with flat earth. I'm not that I don't want to be in your club because I'm one of your like biggest like cheerleaders over here in Florida now, but Thanks. I think I'm going to put, I think I'm going to write no curve on it. Nice. If you can get right? away with it, that's yeah. That's seven letters. No curve. Nice. Mm-hmm. If you think I can't, do you think you're going to stop me in Florida? I hope not. No, no, no. Better just, not. No, I think I think that's perfect. No curve. That's good. Mm-hmm. No, no. Someone's going to be running tomorrow to you know get it before me. Better not. In I know Florida we shouldn't be there's... talking about it on air. You know what? No one. Yeah, really. It's, it's our little secret. <laughs> no one will know. <laughs> but I got a couple things, and I'm always reading both sides. Because even though I totally believe in flat earth, sometimes I'll get something and I'm like, okay, Mark would know. Um, it was I just a random video I was watching and it showed Google Earth. And you know, you can watch the moon stuff now on Google Earth if you're watching it like on a PC or on your laptop. Hmm. And they, they have um, footage showing the Apollo 11 landing and the actual moon surface with all the rocks and craters and whatnot. And then right next to it, they did a split screen and they showed Google Earth the exact same crater footage and years later, yeah. so they say. Yeah. So what is that? Do you know this? Have you seen this? No. I've seen so many. You want to have, you want to have a good time, look up this. This will, pretty sum, this, this will pretty much sum it up for you. Look up in Wikipedia, okay. third-party confirmation of Apollo moon landing. Okay. Basically, NASA has been beat up so badly over the last few years that they actually had to create a brand new wiki entry that says something to this effect. Don't just take our word for it. Listen to these other space agencies that confirms that we actually went to the moon. And when they're talking about India and European agency and Jap- Japan and China and whatever. And the, none of these have any confirmation at all. Nobody's okay. to date. I mean, even the Chinese supposedly have a rover like the Mars rover that's on the moon's surface right now. Why isn't that thing in the sea of tranquility knocking over the American flag? Why isn't it there now? <laughs> Nobody's ever gone to the American site, even including the Americans. Why haven't the Americans gone back to the American site? And- yeah, it's, it's fishy that no one's gone back to pick up the camera or the, the photo that no. would be still sitting there right in the, in the, uh, the temperature on the moon and everything. But that yeah. photo would just be lying there in the dust waiting, right? Yeah. You know, I don't buy any yeah. of that. And, and but, don't yeah, forget. No, I know what you're saying. Yeah, the moon cars as well. The moon cars are still there. Now, I got myself for my birthday, which I just had, I got myself the Nikon. Uh, oh, we'll the P900? P900. Nice. Yeah. Which has been awesome. I got some awesome photos of the moon, like from the supermoon the other night. But then today I thought, oh, I'm thinking about the stupid international space station with the astronauts. And uh, apparently, you know, it flies past me every day in Lock the Hatchie where I live. So I was thinking about tomorrow night when it goes by, seeing if I can get footage. Now, is that just a hologram? What is that? Because I don't believe any, anything to do with that stupid space station. It, it's more entertainment for me to watch. There, there's, you know, there's, something, on there's something up there, but I don't think that anybody's on it. Uh, it could be a modified U-2. could be mm-hmm. a different type of spy plane. We don't know. I mean, there's something, there's something traveling around in that path. No question. People have, have okay. seen it. They've taken grainy pictures of it. There's nobody up there, though. Yeah, that I can I don't I believe guarantee that either. you. Uh, well, if there was somebody up there, 
they wouldn't have to show such fakery and trickery with the CGI. And, Bingo! You know, but all that, not... It would just be real, and no one would be able to say, well, that's fake and that's fake, because it wouldn't be fake, right? Yeah. It would all be yeah. Le legit. Yeah, but exactly. But when you watch that... video after video... Yeah, you, why, know, you don't have like... to fake it if you don't have to fake it. But exactly. The, you know, yeah, it's, the back it's... of the guy, the astronaut's shirt pulling from the wires. Oh, yeah. And the re ridiculous hair anybody can go on a zero gravity plane for about 5k yeah. and uh and you can watch the videos on youtube and the women's hair just gently flows it doesn't stand straight up like medusa no no me, it, I mean, flows, I was, it flows like it would in water that's that's exactly. not even that much though not even that dramatically and yeah. you know i was a hairstylist so i know how hair moves and i can tell you that especially the lady with the dark hair yeah uh, that that's a that's a roller set that's been just brushed out a few times that it would bounce back into shape like so at, just because it has to because yeah. it's just a tight roller set and it's not been loosened so it's just going to spring back into that same ridiculous shape. Yep, I agree. You know? and, 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 I, and I think to myself, if, if they were really on this, this stupid International Space Station, wouldn't the, the women have their hair in a, in a ponytail and, and a bun? to avoid it getting caught in any kind of machinery Absolutely. or food particles. Six yeah, pre months? Preaching with to the hair choir like that? here. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'm it sure. would either it would either be in a hat, it would either be or pulled back, or I don't know, call me crazy. How about buzz cut it? How about shave those suckers <laughs> down? You don't want hair floating around in those filters. It's a nightmare. Well, exactly. The men have short hair, and their hair never stands up like that, right? Yeah. And you would think, I mean, well, no, it doesn't, because, like, I've watched these zero-gravity planes, and people's hair, men's hair, stays on their head, and yeah. the, the women's hair just floats up, you know, just yeah. ever so softly. Like, like it's really freshly washed, and it, they have really wispy, fine hair, and it kind of floats around. Like, yeah. that. that's what I see. I don't see hair, like shooting straight up like that blonde woman. Like, oh, she looks yeah. almost like oh, she's yeah. upside down with her face gets all red, and she looks like she's hanging upside down. And I agree. Have the hey, camera I'll, right side I've, up. I've got a few more emails I want to knock out before the end of the show. You, you got any okay. shout-outs you, you want to do before you go? No, just to you, and Merry Christmas, and keep up the great work, and but the message is, is getting out there. Like you guys are saying, how many... I mean, even a, a, a dot .com now going for that much money? Oh, yeah. Like... That's yeah, this crazy. thing's not, this thing's not going to stop. And the amount of videos stop. now, you know, it's not. It's no. not. It's going to just keep growing. I've converted, uh, you know, one person for sure. And my son was the one that came to me, so you can thank him. But he's the apologist, so he's a Christian flat earther all the way. So you're great. Love you. Um, and I'm Canadian. And I'm a Canadian, so you're, you've hooked up with one. So that you've done a good thing for the world. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Hey, you have, right. you have a good rest of your day and happy holidays, okay? Thanks. All right. Say Merry Christmas. We're allowed to know. We've got Donald Trump in the White House. Okay. We can all say Merry Christmas, and no one's going to get offended. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Merry Christmas. I'll, I'll talk to you soon, there okay? You go. Okay, we will. Okay, thanks, Mark. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Uh, email, email, email. Who's got the email? Mark, I live in Central Texas. I am the one who called and left a message yesterday for you to call me. I realize you can't call everybody. Maybe you can answer my email. I have some questions about Flat Earth. I'm a believer in it, but need answers so that I can present them to ballers. I wouldn't call them ballers. I call them globalists, especially my Christian son who lives in Houston. Where is my non-Christian son in Aurora? I'm never going to finish this. 306 area code... You are on live with Strange World. Who are you? Where are you from? What are we talking about? Alan from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. I've called you before. Cool, man. What's happening in Saskatoon? Well, um, I just wanted to actually, I was hoping I could rant to you just a little bit about uh, extended or infinite plane theory. Sure. I don't mind at all. I mean, people have done it before. So, go ahead. Uh, see, I'm actually more likely to believe the extended or infinite plane theory based on uh, based on all the videos that I've personally watched. Um, I'm more likely to believe that one than okay. the uh, dome enclosure. Yeah. And, um, like, even... Do you remember um, when you went on Lee Sam Harrison's YouTube show a long time ago? Oh, yeah, that was one of, one of my first interviews. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the week after you were on her show, she had Andrew Bashago, and he was talking about how 
infinite or extended plane theory uh, within a flat Earth model fits better with the stories that he's been telling all his life than the geocentric model, which uh, mainstream uh, talks about. Mm -hmm. And uh, and because he because he had the balls to even say that on a YouTube show, that's why I was hoping that people would vote for him for his uh, truth campaign that he was doing. Hmm. Did you hear about that? Um, I, I didn't. I didn't. But I remember there's a lot of stuff out there and there's a limited number of hours in the day. Oh, um, well, a a anyway, so I I'm just saying that I'm more with uh, the what infinite. He was no, I, about I, infinite. I, I don't hate. I never have hated the infinite plane theory. In fact, you know, the, one of the first people to 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 hit me with that was, of course, the legendary Matt Boylan, who who called yeah. me and you know said, "Look, I believe in the infinite plane." And I know from an artist standpoint, I know where he's coming from. You know, don't fence me in that whole thing. And I'm also not saying that there isn't that the world doesn't continue on. It, you know, flat for a huge, huge distance outside of this world. I'm just saying that we as a civilization, it everything points, for at least to me, that we are enclosed inside here, that we can't get yeah. out. I mean, yeah, they could go on after this place, but I don't think, but I think there's a barrier separating us from that. So if you can imagine a snow globe sitting on the ground and, you know, we can't see outside of the snow globe, then, then that's what I. But I, yeah, I do. I know what you're saying. I don't hate the uh, infinite plane theory. Never have. Never. I have. really, I really only think that the only reason why the the only reason why we're uh, the only reason the only way that we're really enclosed in like a dome is by the powers that should not be. Hmm. Very possible. Is that I mean? Anyway, very... that's, that's my two cents. No, no, no. It's it's cool. Again, it's I I don't. You know, I treat it kind of like I treat the mo different models, the map models, and that is people are still trying to figure out what to do with the the AE map and variations of it. And there's, again, as long as the community, whoever's involved, doesn't believe in the globe, I'm not going to lose an ounce of sleep on it. If yeah. Matt, if Matt's model is right when it comes down to it, it's like, see, there wasn't a dome. I will not cry a single tear over it. But... Anyway, so I, I also wanted to quickly tell you before I go that yeah. uh, I've uh, actually converted several people in my city to the flat way of thinking. Nice. And not the people that have called you from my city. I actually never met them. I'd like to someday. Oh, cool. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Anyway. All right. Well, hey, man. Hey, have a great rest of your evening, and um, we'll see you probably next year. See you later. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. All right, uh, let's see here. Colorado's now a believer flat earth. We're reading this email from Susan. Uh, by the way, there is an on-stop flight from Santiago, Chile to Sydney, Australia listed, and it is 14 hours, 10 minutes or so it says. However, I wonder if this is a real flight. Yes, of course, we all know this. However, there is uh, are one-stop flights that make no sense in a ball earth. Perth, Australia to Hong Kong, then Johannesburg, South Africa. Buenos Aires to Doha, Qatar, then to Perth. Yep, going north. Do you know of any website info that says the sun comes up from the northeast and sets in the northwest south of the Tropic of Capricorn in the summer? Because it should on a flat earth, or maybe you know of someone who knows. Timeanddate.com obviously are deceptive because they have all the southern summer months with the sun coming up in the southeast, setting in the southwest, and Antarctica having 20 hour, 24 hours of daylight with the sun traveling around in a circle in all four directions, like it does in the north in the summer. I bought myself a globe so I could do some experiments. I tilted it towards the light the way it would be tilted in the northern summer. Naturally, as I turned the globe, the direct sunlight always stayed south of the places north of the Tropic of, Cap of Cancer. So there is no way the sun could come up in the northeast of the United States and Canada and set in the northwest. And certainly the direct sunshine could not travel the, all the way around as the midnight sun does. Also, I was wondering if you could explain why the sunrise or sunset over the ocean is sometimes with the sun being very tiny that the horizon and getting bigger or having been bigger when it is above the horizon versus being large in the horizon and a half moon shape instead of a tiny circle. My son who does not believe in the flat earth yet says he does not believe the sun ever rises like a tiny dot getting larger. He says he has always seen it was large on the horizon and half moon shaped. When I told him I've seen videos on YouTube showing it as a tiny dot growing bigger as it rises, he says that he can even fake that. 
That is a big reason he believes in the ball earth. If you have an explanation, maybe that would help him. Also, I'd like to know why southern star trails go clockwise, blah, blah, blah. Let's see here. Also, you said there's no plant or am- animal life in Antarctica. Even Admiral Byrd said there were penguins. Well, yes, but I mean, not when you go inland. I mean, yeah, there's stuff on the coastline, of course. Talks about the various plant life there. Well, there's not a lot. Uh, I think you had a great point about why you think the astronauts refused to swear in the Bible that they went to the moon in Flat Earth Clues Director's Cut. Uh, I could not find the links below your video for the things you said would be there. I'm guessing you have other YouTube videos that have them. I was particularly interested in the other or the one for the current map projections used by the USGS. I couldn't find it myself. I paper clipped a picture of the world with my notations about how far north land goes uh, versus how far south it goes. I think you will like it. My son in Aurora has friends in Denver who now also believe in Flat Earth because of what I have shared with him using some of your videos and others. I realized your area code is Denver. Do you ever have any meetings there about Flat Earth? I'm not in Denver anymore. I am currently in Victoria, Canada, just so you know. I was near Denver, just north in Boulder, for about 20 years. So I'm sorry I missed you. If you take the time to answer me either by phone or email, I thank you very much. It must be very risky to have them on you uh, on your YouTube videos. I admire you for that. Blessings, Susan McIntyre. Awesome. Thank you, Susan. Dome. This one's just called Dome. And it says, Hello, Mark. My name is Brian. I am from the southeast of Ireland. I'm writing to you about the dome shape and other things today. Some short years back, I watched an engineered documentary about domes, about how it is the hardest shape to build, but the most structurally sound and durable of all building types. Interesting to say the least. In some of the old Gaelic myths, it is talked about how you travel to heaven through the sea and salt water, which according to old texts is what lies outside the firmament. So if this is true, then the dome shape would be very much the go-to structure to hold the weight of the water surrounding it. The dome shape has been used in the ancient world so many times in the Middle East, Russia, India, and long before here where I'm from in Ireland. A lot of the old, very fine, golden-laden places in the ancient world were domes, so I don't think this was an accident or just for structural reasons. Worth a thought. Mark, I feel you might have ruled out the possibility of alien life a bit too fast. Also, who knows what's outside the Antarctic? Maybe more lands and suns and moons, or maybe we are not the only dome around. I agree with all your points, man. I've never said there wasn't aliens. The reason I say this is there are so many people that claim to have come in contact with alien life over the years, and most, if not all of them, speak of their advanced technology and more prominent, their mental and spiritual dominance. All I'm saying is keep options open because the world is only starting to understand itself after a long time on holiday. Thanks, Brian from Ireland. Awesome, man. Thank you, thank you. We've got three, four minutes till the end of the show. So let's see if we can crank any more. Hey, Mark, I'm Steve from Down Under, apparently, in Sydney, Australia. I've been listening to your YouTube podcast for the past couple of months, always a day after the actual broadcast, due to the difference in time zone, and thought I'd share this video. Uh, minus the bloody fisheye lens, you can definitely tell that the flat earth truth, not a theory in my opinion, is definitely the reality. I'm glad that your voice is being heard all over the world to this awakening, and always know that you have a place to stay, and if you're ever in Sydney, Australia, keep up the good work, bro. Regards, Stephen Moon. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, let's see how many more I can do here. How about this one? Uh, oh, right. I was going to look at this one. I was in a restaurant in Portland, Oregon called Kennedy School. That's a weird name for a restaurant. I saw this art on the wall and thought I'd take a snapshot and send some pictures to you to add to your collection. Keep up the good work. Uh, yeah, I will include those. It's about a teacher and how her how her her her, instru- her language was she's talking to the kids. It's like a fog o- go- going literally into their heads. It's kind of creepy. So I will definitely take a look at that. Uh, this one's from Isaiah. Hi, my, my name is Isaiah, and I just recently started researching the Flat Earth Conspiracy. At first, I thought it was complete BS, but the facts are all there. I watched your video posted in February, and I completely agree. Unless they are hiding the truth, there is nothing they need to hide. I want to ask some questions, including what type of dome do you feel surrounds the Earth? I have no idea what the structure is made of. Could be a heavy, heavy metal, heavy water, electromagnetic, high frequency. I don't know. Do you think infinite space or just space exists? I think that it's an infinite dimension, but I don't think it's space in in all three dimensions. I think it's a a flat plane that extends out uh, like a giant room. Uh, It's just a studio within a studio within a studio, so on and so on. 
uh, two minutes to the break. Exists, and also, why do you think they would keep lying about this? Why not? Are you kidding? It's going to cause chaos, and they want to control that chaos, and you've got to have structure, get infrastructure in place to deal with that chaos. Uh, if you could get back to me on that, that would be amazing. I've done a lot of research on these topics, and nothing seems to add up. Pfft, we'll see about that. Uh, can we do any more? Tony, right? Say, hey, Mark, did you see the Flat Earth and Nibiru? Do you see the Flat Earth and Nibiru as mutually exclusive? No, I don't. I think that Nibiru, if it rears its ugly head, could be part of this, but it's going to be part of the display system. So if there is some giant celestial event that happens, if you're looking up in the sky one day and you see something that should be scare the hell out of you, don't be afraid of it anymore because it's all part of the system. It's all part of the ride. Uh, please guy, give a copy of your survival guide. Keep up the excellent work, Tony. Uh, yeah, if anyone wants a survival guide, just email me at msergeant23 at comcast.net. I will send you a free 100-page uh, survival guide that I wrote. It's PDF. It's pretty good. Thank you to – we're going to wrap up the show here. Thank you to all the people who called in, including the trolls. And uh, the peanut gallery is going to take a parting shot. And while I'm looking for that, please, by all means, uh, look into the Flat Earth Clues book. Many ideas grow better when transplanted in a nut into another mind than in the one where they sprung up. That's from Oliver Wendell Holmes. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, the Ten Commandments, you know, I am... I still don't know the Ten Commandments by heart, but what I try to tell people is treat others better than you treat yourself. Pay it forward, especially during uh, this time of the year when uh, a lot of people are, are depressed and, and you know, the holidays get them down because they have no one to, to spend time with. Uh, reach out, and you know, especially if you're in Flat Earth. Flat Earth should have changed your, your life by now and should have changed your, your not, not, just, not necessarily your consciousness, but your spirituality. So be a better example for people that are out there. I'm trying to do that every day. You know, don't do anything malicious to anybody for any reason. Uh, try to take the high road. Try to be nice to people. So that's about it. Um, shout outs, of course, to my wonderful girlfriend, Melody, from Victoria, Canada. Uh, family, which I'm going to be seeing here in um, uh, soon for the holidays. I'm doing Patricia Steer's show tomorrow. Just so you guys know, on Flat Earth and Hot Potatoes. That's it, guys. See you next time. Oh, yeah, MarkSargent.com and ClosedWorld.com. 